And welcome to another Mark Bishop show. You know, the importance of equity and inclusion for women leaders in corporate America. Just how important is it? Well, new IBM data shows the pipeline of women leaders is shrinking, but companies can take steps to achieve sustainable progress. With Black History Month in February and Women's History Month underway in March, the issues of diversity, equity and inclusion in the workplace remain at the forefront of the national conversation. And today, more women are breaking through to the top of the leadership ranks. Hard-won achievements are overshadowed by the fact that women remain acutely underrepresented in the middle management tiers, which jeopardizes the prospects for a healthy pipeline of future women leaders. Wow. So what do we do? Well, Kitty Channing Reed, Vice President and Chief Leadership, Culture and Inclusion Officer at IBM. So that's who we need to ask. Kitty, thank you for being on the show. What does the roadmap look like for sustainable progress for women? I am so glad you asked. Um, the the roadmap is really, um, I think, four steps. The first one is very obvious, but very tough to do. And it's really making gender equity a business priority, right up there with revenue and profitability. And then the second piece of that is really accountability. So holding our leaders accountable for uh, achieving uh, gains in equity and representation for women. Um, And for us at IBM, that's really what we call a diversity modifier. It's a mechanism for holding our leaders accountable mm-hmm. and it impacts their compensation and their bonuses. So really important to have that accountability mechanism in place. And then the third thing is, is really putting action behind the plan. Um, it's really important for companies not only to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. Um, and for us, one of the things that I find very um, impactful is our IBM Technical Pathways Program. It's really a program that we've devised for women in, in technical roles. And we wrap a, a lot of support around their education, their experiences, um, and their exposure um, to others in the company. And we put about 800 women through that program Hmm. and about 190 of those women have been promoted to senior roles as a result. That to me is an example of a program that really works. Um, And the last leg of this is, is really looking at the top roles and really assessing the requirements that are needed for those roles and not making it a long list of things that disqualify women but, but instead embracing um, a short list of qualifications that are critical to success in the role. So those are the kinds of things that we think will help companies move ahead um, in terms of driving sustainable progress. Yeah, well, uh, you know, companies, the culture is a key factor in, in helping to advance the careers of women. There's no doubt about it. How can employers support their female employees and achieve the gender equity shift in leadership that we're talking about? Is it along those lines that you've mentioned? I think it is along those lines. There's some, there's some recommendations I think we make in the study around specific things that can be done. Um, And it's really around creating access to opportunities and providing what we call wraparound support and mentorship. Um, You know, again, it's not that women are not qualified. It's not that women are not prepared to take these roles. It's really creating a culture where they have the opportunity to compete equally. Um, And some examples of those kinds of things are that will help are creating um, programs that help provide exposure to male allies and female allies alike um, when it comes to women. So we have three or four different things, but I think I'll highlight one thing in particular, and that's an organization that we, um, we call Women in the Corner Office. And it's really um, a group of people who highlight via short vignettes, video vignettes, women who are taking 
on a really tough task and delivering big for the corporation, highlighting that to others in the company and really helping women also create their own individual leadership journey and putting sponsorship and mentorship around those women. To me, those are aspects of creating culture that we can activate to really make a difference. Well, uh, looking at the new IBM, uh, IBV and chief global study, it found that organizations are losing their footing in the effort to achieve gender equity in the global workforce. Only 45% of organizations have made advancing women into leadership roles a top formal business priority. But it is up 25%, uh, you know, compared to uh, in 2021. Kitty, what is IBM actually doing to strengthen the leadership pipeline for women right now? And what do these actions include that relate to accountability? Yeah, so the thing I would highlight here is our commitment to creating very aggressive aspirational goals around representation in our executive ranks for women, and then holding our executives accountable by, again, I shared this with you earlier, the diversity modifier. So essentially, we put the goals out there and we say, if you achieve the goals, then there's upside to you in your bonus and compensation. If you fail and we lose ground, then there's there's potentially a negative impact to you um, as a leader in terms of your compensation and your bonuses. And then, of course, if we if we don't lose any ground, then you haven't lost anything, you haven't gained anything. But there's the real incentive to overachieve and achieve, and then there's a disadvantage to not making it a formal priority and actually achieving the objective. So that's on the bonus and compensation side. I think where we really have the opportunity to make a difference is with the culture. I highlighted some of the examples, but I'll highlight another that I think is really important. And that's our business resource groups. We have about 65 business resource groups that we fund and that we, um, we um, propagate through our organization. So there's 65 of these organizations globally that focus on the needs of women, um, both inside and outside of IBM, putting support services, uh, mentoring, coaching, training, education, exposure services around the women that we employ across the globe. And this one is a game changer. Um, this is the way to make progress in the 21st century. Hmm. So for us, it has been amazing in terms of the traction we've driven. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And, you know, I think another footnote was further investing in collaborative tools and teaming practices that allow women and men to engage effectively in physical and remote environments, even after the pandemic abates to help performance overall. A lot of it is attitude, of course. Listen, there's a lot of stuff in this. Where can listeners go, uh, please, Kitty, for more information about the IBV Women in Leadership Study? All right. If you guys would take a look at ibm.com forward slash women dash leadership dash 2023, you can find the study there. And I encourage all of you to dig deep and look for ways that you can um, you can implement these strategies in your own company and more importantly how you can challenge your own thinking in this space yeah and this is the month to do it uh, black history month you know in february and women's history month underway in march uh, the issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion are on the forefront, a lot of people's minds, in the workplace. But you've highlighted a lot today, and you've opened my eyes. It was a very informative, Kitty, and we thank you for taking the time to share and explain this. And I would like to mention again, folks, listen, ibm.com forward slash women dash leadership dash 2023. Okay, thank you, Kitty. Uh, Kitty Jenny Reed, Vice President, Chief Leadership, Culture, and Inclusion Officer at IBM. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me.